Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a journalist, author, interviewer and broadcaster. I also happen to be the writer that Richard Harris chose in 1989 to become his authorised or official biographer. We were supposed to work on the book. Sadly, we never did. But I finally wrote it and published it in November 2022 in Ireland and the UK. It has recently, January the 10th to be exact, become available in the United States and other territories. So I'd like to read a fragment from chapter 9. It's headlined or it's called Dueling with Death to Have an Affair with Mia Farrow. I'm going to be fucking killed. I'm going to end up in the Hudson River, Mia. Richard Harris to Mia Farrow, circa 1970. It's easy to understand why in 1969 a critic suggested Harris return to acting. He hadn't released a movie since Camelot. Projects were announced in the press but came to nothing. These projects included films such as On a Clear Day You Can See Forever with Barbara Streisand, Play Dirty with Michael Caine, which Richard started shooting but left, and Hamlet, based on Harris's script directed by Frank Silvera and with Faye Dunaway playing Ophelia. Not reported, however, was an affair Harris had with Mia Farrow that might have led to him being battered or dead. Richard kept the story a secret for over 30 years. Finally, he told it to me in 2001 because we were talking about how much Sinatra's music weaved its way into both of our lives. I'm going to tell you how much Sinatra weaved his way into my life. I had an affair with Mia Farrow. How's that? For fuck's sake, Richard, are you serious? I am. When Romeo and Juliet became a tremendous success around 1970, actually 1968, I made a deal with Paramount to do Hamlet. I scripted it myself. I wanted George C. Scott to play Claudius, and I wanted Mia Farrow to play Ophelia. And we had a huge affair. So one day, I'm convincing her to play Ophelia. She felt she couldn't play Shakespeare. So I'm reading it for her in her apartment in New York, rehearsing it. Then I was getting ready to take her out for dinner, and the phone rang. She says, excuse me, goes into another room, her office, takes the call, comes back and says, it's Frank. He wants to talk to you. Mia, did you fucking tell him you and I had an affair? She said, no, I didn't tell him. I told him about Ophelia. And you've met Frank. I said, I have. She said, well, he wants to speak to you. I said, I'm going to be fucking killed. I'm going to end up in the Hudson River, Mia. Are you fucking out of your mind? They weren't divorced yet. They were separated. She said, I love him. I said, I know it. So I went into her office. He always called me Dickie. So he said, hello, Dickie. How are you? You're taking care of Mia for me? I said, yes, I am, Frank. We're talking about doing Hamlet together, her playing Ophelia. He said, is it good for her? I said, it's a great classic. Harris shook his head as if trying to dislodge the memory of how stupid a thing that was to say to Frank Sinatra. He said, I've heard of it. Silence. I think Sinatra was sending me up. So anyway, we chatted for 20 minutes about things like, remember I told you about that night Dean Martin was with us at some event together and he was kind of rude to Frank? I do, I said. I asked him about that and Frank said, he wasn't really rude. You know, Dean, he likes the kid around. So I said, fine, Frank. Then he asked me, how's your life? I said, life is fine, Frank. How's yours? He said, great. Put Mia back on. Then he said, Dickie, pause. Yes, Frank. He said, you take good care of her. I said, I will, Frank. He said, you better take care of Mia. Now hand me back to her. Fucking heavy stuff, I can tell you. Jesus, Richard, you must have taken that threat seriously. Sinatra was very proprietorial about the women in his life, even if he'd left them, as with Mia. I heard he had Mickey Rudin, his lawyer, deliver divorce papers to Mia while she was making Rosemary's baby. Yeah, I heard that story too, and it's true. So let me get this right. You were having an affair with Mia before she divorced Sinatra. But they were separated, as I said. Either way... Sinatra was your friend? Didn't you tell me he was good to you from the time you arrived in Hollywood? He even loaned you his private plane at one point? Yeah, Sinatra was always good to me. And I hear what you're saying. 
Richard, he could easily have had a few of his mob friends visit you. After George C. Scott slapped Ava, Sinatra sent around a few friends who beat him to within a, an inch of his life. I know. I heard that story. Now I'm going to tell you a story about Ava Gardner. For Jesus' sake, did you have an affair with her too? I did. Press pause. That story relates to the 1976 movie, The Cassandra Crossing, and I may get back to that in another podcast. I thank you for listening to this podcast, which was a clip from Richard Harris raising hell and reaching for heaven. I could have subtitled it and nearly getting killed. Thanks for listening.